Um, I'll just give you a brief background on the um, ASEAN uh, Foresighting Alliance that uh, Malaysia is leading and why, you know, Malaysia is leading this alliance. Um, so Mal Malaysia in 2017 put out the uh, vision Progressive Malaysia 2050. Next. Next. Okay, but actually Malaysia had uh, 2020 vision for, uh, the vision for 2020 was for Malaysia to be a developed country by, 20, by this year. And then five years before this, in 2015, they started looking at, uh, you know, if Malaysia can really attain this or not. And in 2017, they put out the um, vision for Malaysia 2050. Okay, and so in preparation for this, they looked at the mega trends, rapid urbanization, demographic and social change, technological breaks. Um, what Malaysia did was to look at what is happening worldwide, you know, the mega trends and then the risk, like, you know, the climate change, all the problems that we have now. And um, it looked at the countries that, the developed countries that already have foresights. Um, so, including, uh, I think, countries in Europe, uh, Singapore, Japan, uh, China, and um, so they said that for them to convince the uh, Malaysian government to really uh, invest in this foresight was to show the uh, what is, are the performance, what are the situations in the developed countries in terms of demography and population in terms of governance and leadership and uh, this is but anyway here you know they are predict they are predicting what will happen i think these are predictions from different sources of what will the world be 20 in 2050 so 55% increase in water demand, 60% more food, world population of 9.7, and that dami na kami, 1.5 billion na. <laughs> 1 billion live in poverty, uh, uh, 5.6 billion living in urban areas. Next. So I think global uh, mega trends and global risk. Next. And ito yung mga countries, that have the 2050 visions, United Kingdom smart and sustainable nation, um, sustainable lifestyles for the European Union, Finland, sustainable development, Japan, society 5.0, uh, China, major power in SCT, Singapore, smart nation, Australia, sustainability and uh, social equity. Okay, next. So, and this is where the fourth revolution is happening, fourth industrial revolution is happening. And to convince the government of uh, Malaysia that they should support this foresighting is to, by look, comparing the data for the developed countries versus Malaysia, and they're also looking at the average uh, indices for the different countries. And um, next. Next, please. Okay. Uh, in Mal it's not, when they did this, it's not only the Acad Academy Science Malaysia that was involved, although if the uh, initiative came from the Ac Academy Science Malaysia, but there were others, like University of Malaysia, my, uh, which is the Malaysian Industry Government Group for High Technology, 
was also in uh, was involved in the workshop that we attended and so it's really a group hindi lang iisa no next and they went through this process uh, the usual processes in foresighting where we are now where we are heading for what are the drivers to the future what kind uh, the future looks like how do we achieve the desired future and so they have the dif they went through the different stages and the outputs here okay next and um, as a background, Malaysia uh, did reports uh, on the science and technology, geopolitics, society and culture, and economy and finance. Okay. And uh, so they, that took them a long time you know, to prepare the, the, um, the background check on, on these um, four uh, concerns. Next. Uh, next, please. <laughs> and so they were looking also at the technology three. They considered 95 emerging technologies uh, uh, and classified according to whether it, it's for preventive health care, for a healthy nation, uh, disruptive technologies create for business models, reducing carbon footprint, safeguarding well-being, democratization of knowledge, and value-adding uh, our resources and management efficiency, their uh, resources and management efficiency. Next. And according to uh, the Datuk Maslan Otman, that, so they have uh, many groups discussing these different uh, you know, technologies and different aspects, preparation for the foresighting. And I think they started with the different groups all together came up with more than 100 drivers. And then they cut it down to about uh, 30 and finally settled on nine. So, the, you know, prioritizing this. And so the drivers that, the nine drivers that they consider at the end are the people and values, population and demographics, leadership and governance, talents, education and training, green and sustainable practices, urbanization and rise of mega cities, economic growth and equitable distribution, and then the STI capacity and competency. And uh, the visions progressive Malaysia 2050 that sustainable, harmonious, and prosperous. Next. And so these are the trends and attributes. It's like a metabolic map. Uh, so, Dami <laughs> para. Okay, next, para the clip cycle done. And this is how they uh, envision uh, Malaysia 2050 will be. Uh, by leveraging on SDI, so hypersonic airliner, super smart grid of renewable energy, space stations, smart, smart, to, smart dust sensors, brain-to-brain -brain communication, virtual shopping, flying cars, etc. Next. Okay. So. Um, they chose the two, uh, the two that they think, drivers that they think are most important is economic growth and equitable distribution. That's what, uh, because without this, parang wala mayayara, you know. And the leadership and governance, of course, is very important. And so these are the scenarios. One, if you have uh, low economic growth and poor leadership, you will be trapped in misery. Weak leadership and weak economy. And, but then if you're prosperous and you have a weak leader, you will be in a disarray, disarray in prosperity. Okay. And then over there is good leadership and poor economics contented in complacency. Uh, good leadership and weak economy. 
and what they want to attain was this synergized in harmony with good leadership and good economy. So, and uh, in looking at these scenarios, they also considered the unforeseen events. What if we want to attain this, this synergized and harmony state? What if something happens? Like if a like you know if a wild card comes like the coronavirus, ano magyayare? Yung ano gagawin natin? Okay, next. And getting the act together. Next, please. So, in um, looking how they will uh, attain the desired scenario, they look at the transformational shifts uh, according to the different dri drivers. So, for example, in leadership and governance from administrative delivery to innovative, innovative services, from post-truth decision-making to evidence-based decision-making. Hindi yung, ay, dapat pala itong ginawa. Okay, so then the, there's gradual governance and policies to agile and responsive governance and policies, I think, which we badly need. Centralized decision-making to empowered, facilitated, and decentralized decision-making, and so on. So like in, uh, well, economic growth, industry-driven economy to people-driven economy, resource-intensive in to knowledge-intensive, and so on. Okay. Uh, we can, you know, give a copy of this presentation from the Malaysian uh, Academy to the rest of the group. Next. And so here are more of the drivers. So instead, in talents, instead of job seekers, job creators, you know, that kind of transformation, more proactive, next. So, and then they look at the collaborative networks that should be formed to bridge the innovation chasm. And uh, so R&D to business, and the collaborate, collaborative network, the shared vision, the will give you shared vision, lower risk and barriers, talent pools, knowledge intensification, value creation in priority areas, innovation, entrepreneurship, and meeting the market demand. Next. So, this is a proposed collaborative network for their demand-driven R&D and market-driven delivery system. Okay. So, uh, they did real reality checks and industry growth and challenges, industry-driven strategic plan, and what would be the outcomes that they want and to have knowledge cluster, talent hubs, and disruptive innovation. Next. So, and then they listed the new economic opportunities okay, in manufacturing services, health and wellness, and the halal industry. And so those are their focus area. And these are the percentages where they are. Uh, so the services has a high percentage. Still, I think uh, the Philippines also has a very high percentage of services. Next. And so in doing the ASM Foresight Initiative, they were eyeing Industry 4 uh, forward, National Entrepreneur Policy, National STI Policy and Master Plan, the 12th uh, Malaysia Plan and iConnect Initiative that they have done before. So parang that gave them uh, the base for the planning of uh, this uh, foresight uh, 2050 next okay the foresight ASEAN foresight alliance next. Uh, they are really uh, uh, Malaysia is really trying to be a, one of the leaders in the or if not the leader of the ASEAN group and um, so they want to gather the uh, 
the ASEAN, you know, as an economic group, because if the ASEAN were a, were a single entity, it would rank as the sixth largest economy in the world behind these uh, USA, China, Japan, France, and Germany with uh, nominal GDP more than 2.8 trillion US dollars. Next. And so with the ASEAN community, one shared vision. Uh, so there's an ASEAN community vision 2025, the political security community, economic community, and social cultural community. One vision, white, one identity, and one community that the ASEAN is still struggling to have. Next. Next, please. Okay. So, in, uh, they also look at uh, the plans that the ASEAN region has. The, of the so, Singapore is also the 2050 Smart Nation, Malaysia, Progressive Malaysia 2050, Brunei, uh, Wawasan, Brunei 2035, Philippine Ambition, uh, 2040 and Indonesia's National Long-Term Development Plan up to 2025. So, okay, I think uh, you have uh, your own views about Philippine ambition, okay, and what it lacks and how it should can be improved. Next. And in foresighting, yeah, foresighting is an interdisciplinary field of knowledge a subdiscipline of future studies, it, uh, the tools allow people to share, explore, and test their scenarios. And uh, foresight prioritizes resilience, early detection, and fast recovery. Next. And so I don't I think I have to read this, why foresight? Because we are all, con we are doing this now. Next. And the Foresight capacity globally, next. So the future, there are many universities that are involved in futures study. Uh, I think Japan actually has this future design uh, the, for, from the Research Institute of Humanity and Nature, next. And uh, so here capacities of the, they look at the capacities of the government. And actually before they did this foresighting, they went to different countries and re really learned about what they've been doing. Next. And so we then finished with the Malaysia 2050. They want to lead the formation of an ASEAN Foresight Alliance. Uh, so, so that you can work together for one vision, one identity, and one community. Next. And the objectives are to introduce foresight methodology as tools to design ASEAN strategic planning. And this was uh, the reason for the workshop that was held on December 11, 2013. And to use uh, the Alliance is a platform to connect all future planning into the big picture of ASEAN shared, uh, vis shared vision. And to use it as a platform to assist and facilitate evidence-based future planning of ASEAN members in developing their national policy strategies and action plan, and to cultivate experts among ASEAN member officials on future studies and foresight methodology. Um, in, uh, in um, well, the ASEAN Foresight Alliance organized uh, during the last day of the meeting that was held in Kuala Lumpur and elected, uh, sort of elected uh, the chairman, vice, two vice chairs, one from chairman, chairwoman, uh, or actually, it's not the chair is Malaysia, not the person. Okay, and the vice chairs are the Philippines and Indonesia. So that means, and we can uh, send representative who, who it's not dependent on the person. Okay, 
And uh, the Philippines will have a workshop, uh, ASEAN workshop for sighting in, the in November. And this is uh, being organized already by our president, uh, Rodora Sansa. Okay, and so yes, this is to build the uh, capacity, cap capability for, for sighting next. And these are the uh, proposed focus area for the Alliance Sustainability, Jobs of the Future, Technology Foresight, Industry 4.0, Infrastructure, Future Business Model, and Future Healthcare. Next. And uh, so these are the, uh, the uh, dialogue partners, China, EU, India, Japan, Korea, Russia, the U.S. Okay. And these are the subcommittees in the ASEAN. Next. Next. And the uh, initiatives are to organize a yearly Foresight Alliance Conference. And the first one will be in the Philippines uh, in November 2020, and the training program. And it, to connect AFA with other regional and national foresight platforms. Next. I think. So with the formation of the uh, ASEAN Foresight Alliance, uh, Malaysia says that this will facilitate us to achieve ASEAN shared vision, okay? And AFA will facilitate the medium and long-term plan of ASEAN beyond 2025. And with the scenario building of foresight studies, it will make ASEAN become more agile in facing future challenges. Uh, even in the Future Earth program, I've been uh, <laughs> mentioning agility as something that we really need because we don't respond to emergencies has due to hazards fast enough. May nababaon, hindi ma-rescue, you know, hindi tayo makabangon. And so, next. And yeah, that's there. Thank you for, to us for attending the workshop. So. Just, that's just to share with you what we heard at the meeting and we hope we can really participate actively in this foresight thing for the Philippines. So each ASEAN nation will develop its foresight, you know, towards 2050 and then put, put this together, uh, have a meeting to discuss what will be the total, you know, ASEAN foresight. Okay, thank you.